Welcome back. Episode two of the podcast here. We got uh, our March episode coming in hot and uh, we're trying to trying to get better. So Jerry, what do we have as the uh, quote of the day well, here today? Well, the quote of the day. I don't, my quote of the day. I don't really have a quote of the day. I had, uh, <laughs> well, you have one job. I know. One job is the quote of the day. I know, but it wasn't. <laughs> I don't know if this is really a quote of the day, but it was it was from my uh, words of wisdom. No, it wasn't words of wisdom. It was really from. It's not really a quote. It's from Tony Soprano. Okay. The Sopranos, where he he basically said, "Never forget three types of people in your life." Tongue in cheek, those who helped you in difficult times, mm-hmm. those who left you in difficult times, mm-hmm. and those who put you in difficult times. I just thought it was kind of neat the way he said that. There you the go. way things are going. So there's my All right, my starting quote for today. Let's get into it then. Okay. I so, am happy with the episode <laughs> number two here. Are we, are, here. are we live here? What's we're, going we're on? Going, we're back. We're back. And so I talk about my, we've got a little what? swag here. Where's my shirt? Uh, you, well, you're in your closet, I hope. You told me, <laughs> you told me not to wear it. You're wearing it. Okay, I'll remember this for next time. That's there fine. There you go. So we, we got a little bit of swag here um, with, with the Philotimo logo on Looks it. Looks good. And, uh, and shout out to a uh, friend of the show, Beach Hill Supply, and, and Greg, who, uh, who hooked us up with, uh, with some swag. So maybe more coming at, uh, by the end of the year, but we'll see. Uh, it, it, it's pretty comfortable. It looks good. So. No, it does. And the color looks yeah. good, too. Mm-hmm. There you go. Blue and white. <laughs> we got that. Right. We got that coming up at the end here, blue and white. So, yeah, so we wanted to get into um, first topic, tax time. We're we're both busy with uh, taxes. Everyone's favorite time of the year, right? I I saw you here Saturday, which is not rare in March and April, but rare any other time of the year. So so we're here doing taxes. We have a few, uh, let's call them a few bullet points, just quickly to, to summarize what's going on in tax time. Not to tell people to delay but April 30th falls on a weekend, so we actually technically have till May 2nd. I don't want to see you on May 2nd. I'm just letting you know that, right? So mm-hmm. that's something to, uh, to keep in mind for that. Um, some of the regular, regular activities that people will notice this year are your CPP maximum contribution has dramatically gone up. It, it used to be... Um, Less, 3100 bucks less on your paychecks right less mm-hmm. and it's now $3,500 yeah. so between you and your employer uh, it's $7,000 going towards CPP doesn't sound like a lot but it is a substantial difference um, good for future you but present, well it is for the future but you're going to see a little uh, yeah. bit less money on your mm-hmm. paycheck yeah. is basically what I'm what I'm saying the other thing that I really wanted to uh, touch bases on th- some of the stuff that Stay at home, work from your office at home, went up to 500 bucks instead of 400 bucks. Mm-hmm. You just have to tell me that you, you were at home and you get to claim that as a credit. Um, and again, it, it's a small thing, but what I really wanted to focus on from a tax perspective is the tax brackets. I just want people to understand, because they always ask me, how much tax am I gonna pay? Mm-hmm. Those tax brackets have gone up. Um, basically exemption, everyone gets a little bit of free money before you pay tax. Um, 13,800 this year and it's going to go up to 15,000 next year. So that means the first $15,000, you don't pay tax. If you want to remember one thing of this tax thing, this whole conversation is the tax brackets. If you make $49,000 or less, so we'll call it zero to 49, you're going to pay roughly 20% without giving the exact number of 20.5. And remember the first 13 is free, right? So yeah. So it, it averages, together. it averages, 20%. it averages together. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you go 49,000 to 98 or even a hundred thousand to make it easy, mm-hmm. think of it as 30%. If you go from 98 to 150, you're at 40%. Mm-hmm. If you go 40, so if you go 150 to 210, it becomes 45% and it goes up accordingly. The big, but the key here is, league there, yeah. but the key is, is the first 50 grand, you're at 20%, 50 to 100, you're at 30%, and then 100 to 150, you're at 40%. 
And remember, only that amount of money in that box pays the 40%. The first 50 pays 20. So people at least have in their mind an idea of how much tax they're going to pay. And one of the things is when clients come in and, and we can show them on, on the tax program how, exactly how it Absolutely. looks, it, it really clarifies that. But it's, um, good, it's it, good to have in the back of your head mm -hmm. what it is so that you know what's going on. Um, you know, the tax-free limits have stayed the same. They're, you get the 6000 bucks that you get the claim. Still 6000 yeah. 6000 The RSP um, maximum limits have, have going to jump from 27 this year, 27 to 30 to 29 200 yeah. Um, those, are, those are some of the, the key things to look at. I know you wanted to talk about cryptocurrency, these people that are moving money around or trying to make money. Well, like you're, you're I wish them Bitcoin all the best of luck, and, and those on, people. No, no Bitcoin, yeah. And, and what I was, it's, I think it's still kind of a gray area. Well it's, well, it's not a gray area, but it for people might think that not it is. Not for taxes, it's not. Not for taxes, it's not. So we, if, if you are trading um, cryptocurrency or you've bought and sold in the last, in 2021, you, you have to be tracking that stuff and, and maintaining good records because they're going to want to see that. And if you have a loss, um, you, you can a claim loss is that. never good, yeah. but it is. It's it not is as useful. bad as it it's could. Useful, it's useful on your tax return. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. And the gains too. They, they, you know, you never want them to come back and you know reassess I, you for a gain that you had on your cryptocurrency in 2021, and then you get a big tax bill. Yeah, I so. just I just started the taxes now. I've, mm -hmm. I've done maybe 20 or 30 of them, and medical medical receipts and donations the same the same stuff. Lots of slips. The government was delayed in OAS and CPP distribution of slips. Yeah. Don't forget the seniors got five hundred dollars last year on a T4A. Don't forget to submit that slip. It's simple things like keep track of the slips, get them to me. Um, if we've done your taxes before, I can go right onto CRA site and print out the receipts that are missing. Hopefully, mm -hmm. and we'll go from there. And it's a year-round thing. We're always talking about it, and we're always busy. It always comes up March and April with, uh, you know, death it, and taxes, right? It doesn't go away. But it should be something that we're thinking about and talking about more um, yep. with clients throughout the year. Appropriate tax planning really helps save you uh, running around and, and struggles uh, during tax time. Keep so. your receipts, please. So on to the next topic here. We have uh, gas prices. We restart the uh, timer here. So gas prices are, you know... What do you think? I think going up gas prices. You happy, uh, happy about what you see at the pump. I, I don't think anybody right now is not aware of the question of what the heck's going on. How mm -hmm. much am I paying for gas? I think we've taken it for granted what we've been paying for the last many years, and we always complain. Now there's a substantial difference of what's going on. Um, my cousin from Vancouver sent me a picture of the gas station in I think it was Vancouver or Victoria, two o nine for a liter of gas. So if you want to, if you have a 65 liter normal tank, that's 130 bucks that it's going to cost you to fill up. So, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's scary. It's, uh, it's shocking. It's part of the inflation stuff that's been going on. And I guess the question is why is gas where it is? Well, I think and one of my uh, maybe annoying theories, and I'm not sure if it's completely true or not, but it seems when oil prices rise, gas prices go through the roof. But when oil prices drop, which we have seen for, for years that, you know, they've been going down. Um, Are you saying the gas prices didn't go down in the same we, rate? We don't you're see saying? the decline oh. in gas prices as much. I don't know if there's some sort of psychological bias that I have on that, but I, I don't think that it's exactly equal. Um, well, right now they have a, uh, a really nice, good, I don't want to call it excuse, but a reason with the Ukraine, Russia stuff that's going on. Yeah. Um, and I think the people in Europe are feeling it way more than we are, but we are now in a scrambling mode of trying to figure out what's going to happen here. So, and I was surprised to see how much Russian oil is, is sent around the world. And like you said to, I think it was over 50% of, of German in, in oil. Europe, from, in Europe, it's over 40%. It's close mm -hmm. to 50% that they supply gas and oil to the European countries. I yeah. guess, Geography wise, it's it's heck of a lot easier running a pipeline from Russia sure. into Europe, right? Yeah. How are we getting it here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and that's why we, we I think ours is don't quote me on this, like two percent like it's a very small number it's that smaller, we get yeah. affected. 
but for consumers, and we, and we do have a chart here I'll, I'll just put up here, transportation is, you know, everybody knows transportation is one of your big uh, expenses, and if you have a new car or a car payment, you know, that, that is obviously separate to the gas, but um, with gas prices going up, everyone wants to heat their house and, and that, so you and two biggest expenses um, And don't forget, going up. right, we've been working from home the last couple mm-hmm. of years. All of a sudden, you have to go start your car now, and... Holy moly, it's like it's, it's well, a we, shock. Right? We've been hearing before this, we, we've been hearing a lot about clients that are in their businesses getting back to work, whether it be for a few days a week. And, and you know, people don't have, we're lucky to only have a short commute to, to work. But most people, you know, half hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Longer. And you yeah. got both ways there. You're saying I don't. Significant hit on that number you have there, transportation, is it going to be a significant hit? Not used to paying for gas that money probably has gone to savings or spending elsewhere um and so you know i don't i think they're gonna say hey boss so what you're saying is large coffee becomes a medium coffee at tim horns well, trust me with the price of gas the way it's gone up i think it's going to be worse what, than that what i um, what, what i was going to say what i do want to bring to people's attention something that i um when i was reading about it th- this whole topic of what makes up the uh the price of gas mm-hmm. like we we see the liter, dollar seventy a liter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What What are the components um, that make up that price? And yeah. I think it was interesting to read about fifty percent of it is the actual cost of oil, the actual mm-hmm. the raw material of oil. And to everyone's surprise, the thirty percent or twenty five percent is what guess. the government needs to <laughs> take a, taxes. Exactly. Like a, yes. You know, yeah. the juice, as they would say to it. Okay. I'm not even sure if that includes the carbon tax um, on there either. But yeah. Well. It's a big number. It's a big number. It's a big there. number. Yes. We all yeah. knew yeah. it anyway, just mm-hmm. like alcohol, tobacco. Yeah. Um, the the refiner's margin, as they say, the difference what it costs to uh, to buy it, and then the actual price of the gas. They, they're making their 10, 15 percent as well, and then the smallest portion. We always yell at the gas station. You know, these guys are making four percent, five percent, three percent. Yes. Yeah. The the smallest amount is is coming from them. Mm-hmm. They're supplying the gas station, and yeah. then the prices vary depending on each gas station. So, so my my question at the end was: with everything getting more expensive here, do you think we need to send out some checks to fight inflation and the rising? Uh, <laughs> is that how it works, or no? Is that is that worse? Or I, I don't know how it works. <laughs> All I know is that right now it's not going to get better for a while. So we have to. Be a little more careful, that's all. Yes, for sure, yeah. What else can you say? I, so You know what, Jerry? I think we're doing pretty good on time here. We, we might, uh, now, I, now that we've we're, we're got an eye on the clock here, so. People don't see that I have a clock right in front of me that yeah, I didn't we, have we last got, week. Jerry, the clock here now, okay. so we're So we're, I get cut keeping, off. Exactly, yes. I get it, so. And, and you know, I, I, as much as we joke around, we're, we're kind of moving, we're moving into the Russia-Ukraine um, yeah, conversation here. Yeah, this is not a joke around, so. Yeah. It's it's one of the tough things is uh, such a serious thing and obviously we're we're praying for Ukraine and and for everything to come for everybody, to a peaceful for everybody yeah conclusion here, but you know it is our job to uh, to talk economics and markets and and talk with clients so you know if we uh, if we have that. We we got to do our job to the best of our ability. So we're going to kind of focus more here on some of the geopolitical events and how stocks react. But we don't want to downplay at all, um, you know, the seriousness of uh, what's going on. No, I can't. I I don't recall in my recent memory something that's kind of bothered me more than this particular event. Um, And maybe I get fascinated and trapped into the news and trying to understand it. And it's getting more and more difficult to try to understand it. But it is it is a tough thing to watch. It is a tough thing to watch mm-hmm. live, as as people are uprooted from their homes, right? So there's no there there's no question about that. Um, I'm not here to make a judgment call on what's happening or what do I think, but it it looks to me Russia underestimated Ukraine's ability to say we're not leaving. So I think that has dragged this on into this is now three weeks. Mm-hmm. I think the U.S. Uh, sorry, the the Russian stock market has been closed for it's been closed for 14, 14 days, days or yeah, something. Yeah. So we don't need anybody. To, 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 I wonder what will happen when it opens. Hmm. Yeah, and I think the main thing is that we want to what, what what we wanted to show was, 
just how, again, how the stock market reacts. Canada and U.S. actually don't have very minimal, they have minimal exposure to the yeah. Russian economy. Um, and Europe obviously has, has a little bit more. Um, but what we wanted to show here was a, a chart. What you're looking at in this chart is a uh, history of geopolitical events going back to 1941, Pearl Harbor, and just how the S&P 500, we like to use them as the benchmark, how the S&P 500 uh, reacted during those uh, geopolitical events. So, you know, whether they were more intense, less intense, uh, you know, we're not here to decide, but here's a few um, on a chart from one of our favorite follows, LPL Research here. And so what you're looking at here, if you look on the bottom, the average total drawdown is 5% with 20 days for the market to bottom, about three weeks for the market to bottom, and uh, 45 days or so for the market to, to recover. So again, you know, looking at it from a point of the stock market, what, what we see here, um, the, if we could take a, a silver lining um, from a market standpoint. It doesn't make it feel any better when you're in it. No, okay, no, so. it doesn't. No, exactly. And we were already down heading into this. So we were the right. S&P 500 down about 10% heading into uh, the Russia-Ukraine, uh, Russia invasion here. And we've seen it. We're down around 13% last I looked. And we're about 17 days um, in, into this thing. Like you said, it's been about two weeks of, uh, of ongoing. So, you know, not making any calls here, just kind of providing no. this for some context as to, um, you know, what, what has happened in, in past, um, you know, events that, that were maybe in the ballpark of, uh, of this magnitude. The one, so. the one thing I will say is putting on my political how to solve the war immediately what what this has done mm -hmm. um what putin has really done is he has created this thing of all these countries needing to shore up their military and mm -hmm. also their energy security their, their dependence on energy so it's amazing that united nations all these guys not they didn't get along they were always these sanctions that have been put into place pretty serious. in a matter of yeah. seven to ten days that they've all agreed upon mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Yeah. So that has, and, and the Germans, for example, with their, uh, their military spending, which since World War II, mm -hmm. they, they said, no, we're not doing this again. All of a sudden, they passed their bill. I think, don't quote it, I think it was 2.2% of GDP is going to go into military because they're dramatically mm -hmm. underfunded there. So I don't think I don't think Putin was expecting that to go by. So I'm not saying it's a positive. I'm just saying the energy and the military of these European countries, especially everybody's eyes are open. So, yeah. And, and I think, you know, not to, we, we wanted to show this as well, just as a more of if you wanted to pause it and take a look at it back. I, I think that forward looking rate uh, returns, if we look out a year from now, if, if we don't see a recession, I, you know, I think we're yeah. the, the, the data shows here that after a major event, markets are usually positive. Now, if you do see if, we, if this does lead to a recession and, and which, you know, we, could, we don't know that we, we don't know that. So if, if we get that recession, uh, the numbers kind of show I, a downturn, but the consumers are strong and uh, and corporate earnings are are strong as well. We're getting out of the covid stuff. So, you know, hopefully if uh Central banks can um, raise I, rates. I really think the significance of that list, when you, when you look at this list and you mm -hmm. pick up any item, from from I don't know, from Iraq War started to to Kennedy getting assassinated, mm -hmm. to Munich Olympics, they all they were all significant events at the time, mm -hmm. and not that we recovered. But the world goes on. And well, and I think this the, when I the when I look this. at this, we you know there's 40 events here, whatever it is over the last 50 years, there's always a reason, and, and there's plenty of charts on that too, there's always a reason to not invest. There's always noise in there, and again, not to downplay what's going well, on, but this is why we invest for the long term. This is why we, we stay well, invested. I'm smiling. I'm still smiling at the Bear Stearns collapse. The world's done. We're over. The financial world is crumbled. We're done. I guess we weren't done. So let's just pray for these people, like you said earlier. Um, let's get some stability back in the world and move on from it. And it's certainly not fun in the time. No. So, uh, and, and kind of further on that, just because we are, um, in, we are in this drawdown here. Um, 
we, we were going to move into we're talking about the markets. And I think, you know, to put Russia, Ukraine, and, and the uh, negative effect that that's had on the market uh, in the short term here, overall, I think what we really wanted to show was one of our favorite uh, charts here was the intra-year drawdowns of the market. And so I, I think what, what's kind of lost when you're in it is that the world's falling. But what's lost in that is that we do see downturns on average around 13% each year, again, averaging that out some years more, some years less. And, and you can see here what you're looking at here. The blue line is the calendar year returns on the S&P 500. The hollow uh, bar chart is the intra-year drawdowns. So I, I think what we want to get across here is that it's not fun when you're in it, but it is typical to see around that 13% drawdown in any given year. And by the end of the year, still positive. And, and I also think our clients have, sadly, first-hand experience of, of 2020 in March when COVID first hit us, mm -hmm. what happened to us. And the chart clearly shows you here a swing of 18 to 34 in a 12-month period. So if you were if you were away, I can't even say you're on holidays because there's nowhere to go then, but let's pretend you're on holidays. <laughs> yes, yeah. And you came back and said, oh, not bad. We made about 15% on our money. Hey, that's Buddy. We got shellacked during the year. Yes, yeah. So, and that, so and that, yeah, that and example. the numbers don't lie, right? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's there. So we're not telling people not to not not to worry because human nature. We're going to worry. We're all going to worry. Mm -hmm. um, I think this too will find its its ground. Um, and right now, because we're watching, you know, innocent people die, and it, it, it's a little more different than than having Bear Stearns file for bankruptcy, right? So yes, yeah. Stay calm. We're here. Uh, we can make adjustments to what's needed, like we did with, with RIF accounts, if, if people are worried, mm -hmm. getting some money into cash and getting your money out. Let's allow some time to go by, and and once it does, I think we're going to find stable ground again. And this chart is, is is a perfect chart to show you year after year after year. And that I effect... Think the key was 13.6, I think you said, right? That, that the was, average? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we're right around there now. So not to say so, what's going to happen, but, you know, we, we do see this. And that's why effective planning, you know, going into these types of events um, is positive. If, you've t if you're adding money, you, you want to see the market go down so you can be buying more units. And if you're taking money out, of course, you don't want to see that. Um, so you need to effectively plan um, just to make sure that uh, yeah. you're not, you know, selling everything when, when, when we're No, low. absolutely not. Yeah. And, and it is interesting when it, you, you read that since World War II, there's been 37 significant events. And Going back we, to the... We look yeah, at yeah, them yeah. Mm -hmm. and we just, oh, that was, you know, no, you can't say it was nothing because it was significant event at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and reason I'm, it was a significant reason to not invest right if we're talking about it from the investment from an standpoint. investment point of view oh you better you better get out because this is what's going to happen well mm -hmm. obviously that event came and went and i'm certainly hoping this one ends quicker because mm -hmm. of the lives at stake here but mm -hmm. um yeah and, and then you know we we wanted to talk about too that the um not not necessarily a chart for this but w when you do we've had good returns for for a few years here and your account goes up dollar wise um i don't with, remember with what returns. happened last year cj only care about what's happening now okay? i know i know but okay yeah you do have to you know maintaining perspective is is key and and one of the one of the um more intense versions of it obviously you know nobody cares about apple and uh Nobody cares about Apple and, and NVIDIA and Microsoft and Google losing money. They care about themselves. I, I do too. But just looking at this example here to really, the, the market caps of the top of the largest seven companies in the S&P 500, at their peak market caps, they had grown to have 13 trillion, just under 13 trillion um, in market capitalization. And since their peaks, they're down to just over 9 million. So it's approximately three, tr sorry, did I say million? Three trillion dollars. Yeah, I always have to write those zeros loss. out to understand what trillion means. But And so it, I think this, this chart just speaks to our point that it, our clients and, and us are going so, to see larger dollar swings absolutely. when you have more dollars. Like what did you say earlier, you know? 
ten percent on well in nineteen eighty one when I lost I had eleven thousand dollars and, and I lost the uh, ten percent. Oh my god, I lost and now it's eleven million and uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, sure. <laughs> but I guess the conclusion here really is so what you're saying is, you know, the Apple sauce, the Microsoft, the Apples, the Microsoft, the the Amazon, they're not going anywhere. Like well, that's unless the thing, we think that, they're yes, disappearing, yeah. they're not. Mm -hmm. They've taken a hit like all of us have taken the hit. So, and I think that dollar swings, you know, I think more accurately, you know, if you have $20,000 and you lose 10%, you lost $2,000. If you have $2 million and you lose 10%, it's $200,000. It's no joke. So it's not a joke. No. And, and, but, but when you do make conversely, when it goes the other way, mm -hmm. and that's, what's been happening to us the last little while. Yes. Um, Taking advantage of compound interest. Absolutely. In yeah. Seven wonders of the world. My quote for next time. Okay, all right. Compound save, interest save that There for, you go. Save that for next time. Okay, so we, we uh, yeah, so we're through you know, more of the maybe serious topics, and there were certainly a couple serious ones that we, uh, we were talking about in there. Do not tell me that trauma beliefs are not a serious topic, okay? And now we're into, you know, a, a little bit more of a lighter topic. Um, but it yes, is lighter, we do, we do both take uh, the Leafs very seriously. Um, so... I wanted to start it, and I was, we're done with the charts after this. I want, I'm, I'm starting this one, so I'm going to reset ahead. the timer here. Go ahead. Go so ahead. So Leafs, not a great 2022 so far. And we've got the trade deadline coming up. So we're putting on our GM hat. This is going to be live. So we're always going to be able to go back on this one and see you know, what, our, what our thoughts were. So I did want to share one tweet that I saw that says, Leafs since January 1st. Five on five attempts against per 60 minutes. They're third in the National Hockey League. Expected goals against fourth. Chances against third. Dangerous chances against sixth. This is in the NHL. So we're looking at this. We're looking at this. Okay, that's not, that doesn't sound that bad. They're not giving up much attempts. They're not giving up many ch chances. Not Anybody giving make up any saves yet? Mm -hmm. Save percentage oh, is, is the worst in oh, the league. The, 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 you know, this isn't a defensive problem. And so I'm going to start by saying that we've got the trade deadline coming up. And I, I've been saying this for years. I don't think that this is a defensive problem. I, I think that you know, the defense always looks weak. We've always, everyone wants to add defense, add defense. We've lost close games. I say we as a you know, member, an honorary member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Leafs have lost games for years in the playoffs here. Close games, 3-2, overtime losses, you know, 3-1, tough games, right? They have a scoring problem, and right now they do have a goaltender problem. So I think if we're heading into the deadline here, I'm looking at a goalie. I don't I, – I think we just – the goalies are a thing, but I'm I'm looking to add a forward. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I, I'm looking to add a forward, add some scoring depth for the playoffs because I think that's going to be key here. And when we lose a three-two game in overtime in round one, and we come back on this podcast, I'm going to replay this clip here. We need scoring. Defense isn't the problem. We need a well, goalie you're, you're and asking, some scoring. You're asking me to say we need offense when we have one of the highest scoring teams in the league. So we have it already. It's not that we don't have it. We have scoring. We don't, but we have not had, we've had good scoring in the regular season for right. years, and we've had bad scoring. Uh, you know, you don't really solve. Your boy, Mitch Marner. My boy. <laughs> disappears more over the ice penalties than goals in his 35 career playoff games. So again, I think that I, I'm, I'm adding, I'm I, adding offense. If okay. I'm GM, if okay. I'm Dubas, I'm adding offense, and I'm looking at a goalie. All right. What do you think? And I think it's very difficult to find a goalie right now mm -hmm. to just pick one out of the air. True. Anybody yeah. who's uh, top teams. Yeah. Sure. You want to you go and say Fleury or you want to say something like that. But mm -hmm. the top teams have goalies or are secure in that position. Yeah. I believe that the current defense, and I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with you. I think the current defense that we have, as soon as Muzzin gets back into the lineup, and I think that... Sandine, the, the local guy back. Giardino, I I think he's going to find his way to Toronto when this when this is done. Is my opinion because it's going to cost Toronto nothing. So and I and I think what that happens is Little Grant and Dermot get dropped off into the sixth and seventh and eighth position, etc. Mm -hmm. um, I think when you put those guys on the ice, yeah, this is my opinion. When you put when you put Brody with Riley on the ice, mm -hmm. and you put Muzzin with Giardino. And then at the end, you put it in Hall and you add Sandine or whoever you want to put there. I think we're okay. Now, if the goalie cannot stop anything, 
as what's been happening to I mean, us I a little like, bit. I like Jack Campbell, but it just seems like he's right. in his own head. He's had a bit of right. a tough streak. And, and, so. and Masaryk has not played well. Even no, he's he'll not. tell you, he will tell you himself, he has not played well. All the problem respect. is, $3.8 million dollar contract mm-hmm. has to disappear. This is for three years. How is it disappearing? Well, Unless you somebody. Send, well, you can send a you can send a draft pick somewhere and. Well, I'm just and, saying that's what's going to happen, right? Him. Yeah, yeah. But even if you get rid of him, you still need a, somebody else to come up. Your right? Dubis. I want answers. Your Dubis, not who you go. Who you, Giordano, your Dubis. Who are you getting? Goalie, defense, forwards. Well, I don't. I don't think. I think they're going to go and get a defenseman because those are the people that are available to get Claude Giroux, to get one of these hurdles, to get one of these top guys. Max Domi. Now, Max Domi, I don't think he's going to really make Phil a big throw, difference. Bring Phil back? I, I don't know, CJ. I, I really don't the think it's going to make... The hot stand at the Scotiabank Center will be very happy. I don't think it's going to make a difference. I think right now we need Campbell, like you said, get the butterflies out of his head, the worms out of his head. So you're not touching a goalie. You're adding defense. After the numbers I just showed you, you're adding defense there. I'm just saying you're going to add a defenseman into this mix... And there's a couple of players that I'm not big fans of, but I think there's enough bodies. I, I feel sorry for, for Robertson. I feel sorry for uh, Kerfoot yeah, I, because Kerfoot is, has played really, really well. Mm-hmm. But $3.5 million is an easy ticket to pass on and create this room again. And if he's going to be fourth line, then you can't, you can't have That's a That's a lot of money on fourth line, right? $4 million dollar player. Or whatever it's a lot it of money on fourth line. Mm-hmm. So it's tough. I, I would love to see Claude Giroux. I would love to see him. But what are you going to give up? Leafs, for... playoffs. playoffs. What are we thinking here? Where's the, you know, where's the slotting? Where, where are we slotted here? I, I have, my, my desire mm-hmm. is to basically, I don't have a problem playing Florida in the first round. Only because I think Florida plays run and gun a little bit of, mm-hmm. and I think Toronto, that's the type of game they like. Tampa is Tampa, mm-hmm. and Boston we have nightmares. We have videotapes. Yeah, okay? Boston. Yeah, that's so. That's the that's the dragon, though. You want to slay the dragon? I mean, maybe you play. I don't know how they would end up playing Boston in the first round. I think a, a couple of things that have to have to change. Well, they, they, the way they play Boston in the first round is is the two of them finish second and third. But who's going to finish fourth and first, right? <laughs> the other one is Toronto finishes mm-hmm. fourth. They can end up playing Carolina. People don't see that. Like it's hard. No, to... for sure. Yeah, they could. But end it's up, possible, yeah. right? Carolina. I don't put them as a big scoring team. More defensive team, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So again, but they they can score, and it's the timely goals. That's why you need offense. If you're putting four goals up in the playoffs, or you're getting three, you're probably winning four out of seven. If you can put three goals up, I think up. we have offense. I think the guys that we have need to score in the playoffs. Adding another guy, thinking that we don't have playoff offense, we need depth scoring. Okay. And then what do we got these guys for? What do we have them for? Well, they're good. well. I mean, Running hopefully they for do the regular score. Season? Hopefully they do score. But I mean, like my brother said, adding another guy. We need guy. five goals to win a game. That's what he's saying. So <laughs> oh, I know. It's not. And a we're joke. not getting them. We're not it's getting them. It's not a them. joke, right? Well, so that's that's it for us today, and uh, we appreciate you you checking us out and giving us a listen. We'll get um, better at this. We're, still getting we're, better. I mean, we we really hit the time there, so I think we're we did pretty well on the time. Um, I felt better I could about it. I comfortably spend 20 minutes on the Leafs if people wanted. We didn't to. have we didn't have the 10 minute Tom Brady uh, oh, lecture there. My buddy so, Tommy, uh, I heard he's yeah. coming back. Hey, eh? exactly. I guess his retirement speech uh, didn't. Uh, uh, we will see you next time, and and thank you very much thanks, for, thanks for listening again. and following. Yep. Take care. Go. Thanks again, guys. Bye now.